Hello guys, how's it going? I hope you're fine. This is Dr. Balabad speaking, especially. I just want to cover today how Haitian Creole ship Haitian reality, thought, even behavior. Language is a system of, of um, is a is a tool for, that people use in order to um, to think about reality, to be in, in, in contact with reality. Their language is a complex system of symbol with conventional meanings that people use for communication, to commit ideas, commit feelings, passions, etc. Um, each nation has its own language, its own linguistic system, its own linguistic code that it uses, and that language is the medium through which reality is known. Right? If you're not in, 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 in direct contact with reality, you basically have an idea of reality. Most of the time, that idea that you have, that concept or that idea that you have about, about reality is known by, through language. So language play a very, very, very important role in shaping people's reality, in shaping people's reality, even prov provoking the, 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 the behavior of certain groups in, spe in a special environment. There are a lot of um, hypothesis, theories, um, on whether languages are the, the, the exact thing with, with thought. Some thinkers, especially linguists, they think that language and thought are totally different. Others, they think that language and thought are interwoven. Now, I just want to take the hypothesis of um, Edward Sapir and Benjamin Wolfe. These are two uh, American um, ethno-linguists, I would say, or social linguists. They have a theory which is called the sapir wolf hypothesis. This hypothesis um, simply that language has power and um, language of each culture does not merely influence how people understand the world, it ships perceptions and leads people to think in particular ways. People who speak different languages live in different sensory world. For the structure of their languages and words highlight some things and ignore others. So languages are basically um, one of the ways that reality can be known and also languages trying to ignore uh, reality and also highlight part of reality. So for the Haitian language, it is the same. I'm just going to tell you some of the words that, um, that are in Haitian Creole that shape the um, Haitian thought, the Haitian mindset. And it, takes, it would take a long time, a lot of um, devotion for Haitian folks to break through, to jailbreak break that idea, that paradigm, um, to have another reality. First and foremost, I have to say that, for example, in, in Canada, the word snow has more than 10, there are more, more than a dozen words for the word snow because uh, snow is one of the things, one of the reality that is very, very present in Canada. Therefore, people have a very familiar, um, common, um, it's a common reality in the, in, 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 for the Canadian. For Haiti, it's not even a thing. We mostly have, we mostly think of, um, snow as a concept because we hardly we don't we never see snow in haiti we just see that when we travel to other countries or in books or on the internet so one other thing that i just want to say that and, and i just want to say is that there are some words in haitian creole basically shape the mindset of the haitian folks and i was for the good for example i'm going to take the example of sex right for sex even in the in english there are a lot of words that you use in, in english that can be vulgar. For example, if you say to have sex with somebody, to lay with, with somebody, to go to bed with them, somebody, um, which is a euphemism. But in hey, um, you can say to fuck in, in English, to screw, okay? But in, in, in Creole, it is the same thing, right? When you say someone have sex, you can say taille, coupe, which is basically the word cut. And it's, it's uh, discriminatory to women, not even to men most of the time, okay? And um, the second, I would say, word, in, in Haiti, um, that's part of part of it shapes the the reality of Haitian people is the word white. You know, um, it's it, that idea goes back to the Haitian to the Western philosophy, the Western ideas about reality. Is that 
white is a symbol of purity, whereas black is a symbol of obscurity, of uh, evil. Right? We, we can even see that in the, um, the collective imaginary of Christian people in the West. They tend to think of God, especially um, an old white man, which is in the sky, and that person is basically um, watching over all of us in, in, in the world. And that's an ideology. That's, a, that's an ideology. That's, a, that's an anthropomorphic way of thinking about God, right? That's the imagination of mankind. There's not, no such thing, scientifically speaking, even philosophically speaking. There's no such thing as a white man in the sky um, who is looking down to people and who is trying to judge others because he's all good, he's pure, and he knows everything, right? He's omniscient and he basically know what to do, what not to do. This is basically something that we come up with in a Western civilization. It's not the same uh, if you go back to other um, spiritual teachings like in, the, in Buddhism, where there is no such thing as uh, the divine is you uh, whenever you are not preoccupied with survival needs, right? It's, it's, it's totally different. So in, in Haiti, the word white, which could be translated by blanc, as you say in French, blanc, in French, blanc, uh, blanc, la couleur blanche. In Haiti, you say blanc. Blanc is basically uh, a word that people use for good intentions. And other people use it for in a more racist way because a lot of people are just, um, they're whitening their skin color just to be more white-like. And others are using other cosmetic products to do that. Right? And, and people feel like whenever you say that you are white, in a sense you say blanc, um, you have a sense of, of superiority, of honor. Right? We still have this, um, this word still ha has a lot, of, um, a, a lot of, I would say, rubbish metaphysical content with it. So the word black, which is noir, has lots of native uh, content with it. And especially in Haiti, which is a, a pure country, a, a poor country, um, where whenever you have the the material, whenever you have your material needs met, people give you respect, right? It's it's very very likely that when you're white and you you have other people living in other countries overseas, they are just sending a bunch of money to you, and people are gonna take you seriously. So these words, um, I'm gonna continue with this series of of, of podcasts and next episode I'm going to be talking about other words uh, besides sex and um, the color white which one of the one of the one of two words two concepts that imprison the reality the linguistic reality of Haitian people and therefore the the mental ability of the Haitian folks here in Haiti and I'm going to tell you I'm going to I'm going to say a couple of sentences in Haitian Creole uh, because the goal here is to get you familiarized with the culture, with the mindset, with the people of Haiti uh, and also the language, right? Because you're not going to fully understand the people without knowing, without basic, have a basic understanding of the, of, the, of the language, right? So the word that we are going to learn today is, um, the first one is blanc. I'm going to give you a couple of sentences in um, Haitian Creole for the, for the two words, blanc. And then you, I'm going to give you the translation, right? So if you just 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 listening to the pasta for the first time, you can subscribe to my channel on YouTube, which is Self Taught Polyglot. You can go to this um, podcast. You're gonna find a, a link to my YouTube channel, which is where I discuss things in a great length, even though I'm slightly small. Uh, you can go subscribe there and try to watch all my videos on YouTube. And also, you can subscribe to this podcast, the Self Taught Polyglot podcast, where I talk about languages in great length linguistics and philosophy of languages. I'm a Haitian, I'm not a, I'm not a native speaker of English, therefore there might be uh, some imperfections, but um, I'm trying to do my best. And also I'm recording with my telephone, and um, I hope that you can listen to me and learn something with, um, with me, from me, and um, we can move together. So if you just wanna follow me there, and you can be, you can, you can also write me messages on all the social medias, you're gonna find me there, okay? This is Self Top of the Lot, my name is Robert Antinja. When I get back, in this uh, um, episode, I'm going to teach you a couple of sentences in Haitian Creole using these two concepts that are, that are imprisoning the, 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 men, the mental landscape of Haitian folks here in Haiti.
Okay, we're back. The first word, which is um, sex. I'm gonna tell you sex, you know, in, in a vulgar way in Haiti is coupé, like to cut, tailler, cut. Let's take an example. Si dame non, t'es coupé avec monsieur. Si dame non, t'es coupé avec monsieur. The little girl or the girl had sex with him. The little girl had sex with him. Si dame non, t'es coupé avec monsieur. The little girl had sex with him. Monsieur coupé si dame non. He had sex with the little girl. He had sex with the girl. Now, had sex, coupé. Haitian Creole is a very easy language. So, T is to suggest that the action happened in the past. Up is to suggest that he's doing the action right now. Okay? T, whenever you have a verb and you put T, T E in Haitian Creole, it refers to the past. It always refers to the past. All right? Whenever you have this. Uh, he had sex with a girl. The girl had sex with him. The word blanc. Monsieur son blanc. This guy is a white that, that is a white man. Monsieur son blanc. That is a white man. That is a white man. And it's the same thing when you speak French. Lorsque vous parlez français, vous allez tout simplement utiliser la même chose. Comme je l'ai dit tantôt, euh, le créole, c'est une langue qui est, on peut dire, euh, ça vient de, du français et des langues aborigènes, c'est-à-dire les langues qui se, qui se parlaient, les langues qui, euh, qu qui se parlaient en Afrique, ok, à l'époque coloniale, avant que ces, ces Africains-là euh, arrivent euh, en Haïti pour former une nation qu'on appelle Haïti. Donc, euh, ces Africains-là avaient déjà une, 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 un moyen de communication, un langage. On peut dire une langue. Et cette langue-là, il va avoir une influence avec le français. Et ça va produire une, une troisième langue qu'on appelle créole. Ce qu'on appelle pidgin. Une fois que cette langue-là a une, une, une communauté linguistique, ce n'est plus un, un pidgin, cela devient un créole, un créole. Donc, un créoliste, c'est quelqu'un qui étudie une langue formée à partir des deux autres langues et cette langue-là a une communauté linguistique. Let me say that in English. Just to wrap up, uh, Haitian Creole is a, is a language that is from the, uh, the mix of French, the, the metropolitan French, and um, indigenous languages, okay? Languages that were spoken in Africa at the time of colonization. So the French people went to, to Africa looking for slaves in order to set them in America just to work for them. Those African people from different tribes, they had a way, they have their own linguistics code, their own language, we can say that. And once they get, even though the language were different, but they had a way to communicate, right? And then once they get to uh, Haiti, to the no land, they developed a common language. And that common language was influenced, was hugely influenced by the, uh, by the, ma by the master's language, which was, which was French at that time. And that gave, that gave birth to, a, to another language called Haitian Creole. But at that time, it was not a Creole, it was a pidgin. It became a Creole once it is the language of a specific community. A specific community has it as their native tongue. Therefore, it is a Creole. Okay? So, I'm going to finish there. Thank you for listening uh, to my podcast, which is self taught Polyglot. I am a, a teacher of foreign languages. I'm a polyglot. polyglot. I'm learning languages on a daily basis. I'm also a linguist-to-be. I'm studying linguistics at the State University of Haiti. I want to, de to deepen my... Um, my, my research studies and other things that I'm really interested in languages, study different languages, compare different languages, English, French, Haitian Creole, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, um, German, 
Chinese and Russian. So I'm really anxious in learning languages and I just want to say that, yes, that's a great honor for me to be here, guys. So subscribe to this channel, which is um, to this podcast, your self taught polyglot like from Anchor or whatever you get your podcast from, Google Podcasts, um, Apple Apple Podcasts, etc., po- Podcast Addict, etc. All these platforms are wonderful. You can subscribe there. Whenever you're listening to this podcast, you can just subscribe. Whenever you have a new podcast, you can just um, download it and listen to it and share it. Then you can go to my YouTube channel, which is Self Taught Polyglot on YouTube. You can find me there. You're gonna see me, and then you can subscribe to my channel because I have uh, weekly content there available for anyone that are tackling foreign languages, that are uh, learning foreign languages, that are learning Haitian Creole. I have a lot of resources for my beautiful native tongue, which is Haitian Creole. My good, my, um, I'm not going to say good, good, that's kind of biased, but my native tongue, okay? So thank you guys for listening to my YouTube channel, uh, for subscribing to my YouTube channel, uh, subscribing to my podcast, and I'm basically listening, I'm, I'm basically waiting for anybody who's ready to move forward with me and um, to, uh, to, to get started learning a new thing with me. So you can subscribe to this channel. It's a great opportunity. You can just keep, go and click to anything you want, and then you're gonna basically receive everything and all the notifications. Notifications, you're gonna receive them, and it's gonna be great. Thank you so much, guys, for all your support. And I hope to see you next. And I hope to see you on my YouTube channel, Self Taught Polyglot. Thank you. Ah, Creole, I see. So, Good.